During the final part for this question, we're asked when will the height be one four five three meters? When will the height be one thousand four hundred and fifty three meters? Okay, so here we have an object that is thrown up in the air. And at some point, we know the maximum height in the previous question, we calculate it as 7,290 meters. So at some point along the way, its height is 1,453 meters. But there's another time where it will also reach this height. Okay, so you can see there's some other time when this height will also be 1,453 meters here. And when it comes back down, it will again reach that height, 1,453 meters. Now you might ask, but won't this be positive and that one will be negative? No. Negative 1,453 one, would be if it falls further beyond the point where it was re, uh, launched and then reach a negative displacement in other words a displacement downwards this displacement is upwards and that displacement is also upwards so one thing that you should realize is that this time there will be two answers okay so let's see how is it possible that we are going to get two answers well let's see what do we know in this question I'm just going to redraw picture so here we have initial velocity was given to us as 378 meters per second okay that's the one thing that we do know the other thing that we do know is the height at which we want to go calculate it that height is at one four five three meters okay now the velocity at this point and the velocity at that point will be the same but this will be upwards and that will be downwards but we weren't given that velocity we know the velocity at the maximum height but not at this height okay so we don't have the future velocity we have change in displacement though and we have acceleration acceleration is negative 9.8 because we chose upwards as positive so let's go and see which formula has initial velocity, acceleration, and change in displacement. And we want to calculate um, when will the height be, in other words, time. If we go and look at the formulas, the only formula that contains delta x, initial velocity, and time is in fact this formula that has t, in a quadratic format and that's why we're going to get two answers so we choose that formula fill in all the values we don't know average velocity we know initial velocity is 378 future velocity is not zero okay that it would be zero if we're talking about the maximum height we are not we're talking about the height one four five three meters delta t is what we want to calculate and here we have negative 9.8 as our acceleration constant substituting into this formula okay so now that we know which formula to substitute into let's go do it we have delta this is the formula delta x is equal to initial velocity times delta t plus a half a delta t squared now with this we have one four five three meters is equal to initial velocity which is 378 times delta t which is what I want to calculate plus a half times negative 9,8 times delta t squared okay how are we going to solve this question that looks quite difficult and as a matter of fact it would be if you don't already know from mathematics how to solve a quadratic equation so first thing we need to do is write this in the format ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero 
okay so I'm going to multiply that to give me negative 4.9 so here we get negative 4,9 okay and I am going to take everything to the right hand side so that that negative can become positive so I get 4 comma 9 delta t squared minus because this one taken to the other side will become negative negative 3 7 8 delta t plus I'm gonna have to make this a bit bigger plus 1 4 5 3 is equal to 0 and with this in mind, we are going to use the quadratic formula to actually solve this. Do you remember the quadratic formula? Well, the quadratic formula says that x is equal to negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. That is if I have this expression. Okay, now with that expression, I have delta t instead. And my delta t for b, I have negative 378, and that will therefore be negative, that would be positive 378 plus minus that's why there's going to be two answers one is going to have a plus and one is going to have a minus and inside the square root um, I have b squared so 378 squared minus 4 times a which is the coefficient of the square um, term is negative oh no it's 4 comma 9 c is this last term 1 4, 5, 3, and all of that is divided by 2 times a. 2 times a is 2 times 4.9, so that's just the 9,8 again. Okay, and now we solve this using our calculator. Okay, to do that, I'm first going to solve the interior of the square root. So I've got 378 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times 1, 4, 5, 3. So the inside of the square root gives me 11405.2. That means the square root of that, if I take the square root of that, I get 338.238. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to store it in my memory. So I click memory store and that's going to store it in my memory which means that this is going to be this whole answer is going to be in memory store now I take my uh, first term above the numerator that's 378 and I'm going to add my memory store so add and instead of clicking memory store I'm going to click memory recall I recall my memory that's what MR stands for and when I press equal, I now get the answer for 378 plus the memory that I stored. Divide this answer now with 9.8, 9.8, and I get the answer of 73.0, and that will be 9. So my 1 delta t will be equal to 73,09. Now the other delta t is going to be when I use subtract and this is where it benefits me that I actually saved it to the memory in my calculator. So I'm going to take 378 minus, now I recall my memory again, there you see 338.2 blah 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 blah, okay, get the answer, this time I subtracted it, okay, so that's why the answer is a bit smaller, so when I divide with 9.2 8 I get after 4 comma 0 instead of 0 5 it would be 0 6 seconds and these are my two answers the one answer is what I get 
So you can imagine here the object is going up in the air and there it comes down again. So after 4.06 seconds it's going to reach 1453 for the first time. And then later after 73 seconds that's after it's reached its maximum height and now it's coming down again now after 73 seconds it's again reaching 1453 meters let's go put that answer in okay so we know this is the formula that we used we did our substitution step uh, sorry our stock taking step now in our substitution step you can choose this step but that looks very complicated to go in uh, substitute that way. Let's rather go and choose the step we used before. Let's rather just type it in like that. In other words, taking our formula as it is and simply substituting into the values that we do know. So we have that change in displacement is 1, 4, 5, 3 is equal to our initial velocity we know is 378 okay then we see that we have delta t we don't type the tau deltas so just t plus okay then we have a half is just 1 divided by 2 multiplied by negative 9.8 so put because it's negative put it in brackets negative 9.8 Close the brackets and then it's multiplied by t squared so t and this cuppy squared preview and that looks perfect then we've already done all the effort to find the answers and the answers that we got were delta t is either equal to 73.09 so seconds so 73.09 don't forget your seconds preview just to make sure that looks good or 4.06 seconds there you go we've done this question perfectly